Jonathan believes that it's in inconceivable that he will go to prison. He's been a star all his life. It is inconceivable that this great man could, in fact, be found guilty. He's Epstein. Yeah. <laughs> we, we were shooting in New York when the, when the Epstein case was at the most, and I kept thinking, this is Epstein in a different shape. But this is who he is. My name is Susanna Beer, and I'm the director and executive producer of The Undoing. And I'm Hugh Grant, and I play Jonathan. This is Vanity Fair, notes on a scene for The Undoing. Come here. Come here. Hey, no touching. Let's go. It's OK. Mm. When I used to watch Hugh Grant in, with all the romantic comedies, I always thought there was a, a certain sadness to his light, um, charming performance. There was, I always thought there was a dark side to, to that performance. And I thought that that sort of um, dark depth would uh, lend itself very, very well to playing Jonathan Fraser. I probably think Hugh is perfect for a whole lot of things. Most things, I would say. Well, another fine mess I've gotten you into. I begged him. And then I engaged everybody else, including Nicole and David Kelly <laughs> and everybody else to keep begging him because he's quite sort of a difficult to convince about anything. He, I don't think he wants to work ever. With Susanna, whose Danish films I love, and uh, David Kelly and Nicole, and it also seemed very classy. And, and although Susanna's right that I, I, I shy away from work, I, uh, I couldn't resist it. But, but especially if, if the guy was the murderer. Well, this is real. This is how those visiting spaces in certain prisons actually operate. So, so the visitors will be on one side and the inmates will be on the other side. And then the, the prison guards are, are being quite observant. And of course, that tension plays into the scene. I was mainly just trying to be, keep the boys' spirits up for very, very complex reasons. Because Jonathan is a sociopath, he, can't, he doesn't really feel proper things, but he does feel that his job in this scene, Jonathan's job, is to be marvellous and to be great with the boy and the wonderful uh, dad and, and healer that he always was. So it's actually partly ego that makes him nice to the boy rather than love. But, but you hopefully wouldn't be able to tell the difference. Look, I do think he loves him. I do think he loves Grace. I just think he is so messed up that he is actually capable of loving someone and, and, and yet be 100% dishonest with them. Why did you run? If you're innocent. Well, I ran because I... I was scared. I, I, I knew how it looked. And I was selfish. Every time I do something, I, I make up specific rules that I adhere to. You know, sometimes I don't tell anybody else about them, but it's, it's some kind of, <laughs> it's almost like on a, on a borderline OCD kind of rules because they have to be kept. What um, rules did you have on this? Not to cross that border where you actually tell a lie. Push it right to the border, push it right there where it can't go any further, but not never cross a line. It's quite heavy duty or difficult acting, at least for me. Did you kill her? No. Uh, there I was in New York shooting this series, which I partly did to get away from my small children, but actually really, really missing them. So I was drawing on all that. And what I recall is sitting down on take one on my side of this and bursting into tears. And um, were, I'm sure early takes were like that. And then you, quite rightly, <laughs> kind of told me to man up and said, I think he might be... Uh, trying to help his son a bit more by being a bit stronger. How are you at her school? Fine. Violin? Rosenbaum? What's the latest on him? My note to Nicole was, do not give in. Do not give in. And with Henry, it was, you are so angry with your dad. You are so angry with him. 
but you really love him. I mean, it's actually fun doing a scene like that in a prison, and it's fun having, you know, being restrained by the environment because you can't do any sudden movements. You can't do anything which isn't, in terms of physicality, very controlled if you're a visitor in a prison like that. So whatever Henry might be feeling, he would have to sit completely still. I, I knew I was guilty, um, but I, my, part of my job in this series was to convince my wife and my son and a worldwide TV audience that I'm innocent. Uh, and the only way to really do that was to believe it. So I, I decided Jonathan was one of those sociopaths who believes his own lies. I allowed myself to be persuaded that a person desperately needed me. So uh, when I'm saying, I didn't do it, I didn't do it, I did have an affair, but I didn't do it, I, I mean it. I, I, he, that, in that moment, I think he really believes he's, he's innocent. I fucked up. I made a terrible, terrible mistake. I um, allowed myself to be uh, persuaded that a person desperately needed me because her child was very sick and I could help him recover. And I let that be a reason to lose my strength of character. I mean, digging into that notion of a psychopath, I would claim it's a really interesting place to go for an actor. And it certainly is is for a director, because the one thing that would have made this whole show a complete failure would have been to actually lie with it as storytellers. That's why after the, we finished shooting, I went on murdering people for a few weeks. And, <laughs> <James is on. laughs> and then, after everything, instead of being uh, grateful for everything I'd done for her and for her son, she became unsound, threatening got to the point where I felt she wanted to destroy us as a family. So I went to confront her about that. And that's it. That's all I did. You're right, I, I, <laughs> equally I couldn't do anything too fake because although I wanted to fool everyone all the way through, my dream was that if anyone ever watched the series twice, they'd think watching it the second time, yeah, well, of course he's guilty. You can see that, it makes sense. Quite a difficult balancing act. Why did you run, if you're innocent? Well, I ran because I... I was scared. I, I, I knew how it looked, and I was selfish. In that moment, I was completely selfish. I thought only about myself and what might happen to me. Another interesting thing I've learned about the way you directed this, from just from us doing these interviews together, is that thing you said last time about making this a kind of fairy tale. Like, is that right? Yeah. Yeah, the halo behind him, uh, which is which is sort of the the very wide windows, which are in this huge big space, and all the white shots as well, is a weird attempt to make this space magical, even if it's horrible. It has this kind of soft, yes, and almost like divine-like lightning, which in a weird way doesn't take away the brutality of the space, but just reminds us that outside the walls of this space, there is actually a, an amazing world. Also, it's just very boring to shoot against a blank wall, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, but you can make different choices with a room like that, and you can do things which would look different and w which wouldn't be a drab wall. This was sort of reminding the audience that the world outside has a magic presence which is going to make Jonathan's loss even deeper. Did you kill her? No. You're fucking her. <sighs> okay. Well, straight to the net with that one. Were you? Uh, yeah, we were romantically involved, yeah. I think weirdly that this scene is where Grace decides to be supportive of Jonathan. And it's because of Henry. It's because she sees Henry and Jonathan together. And she realizes the strong bond between them and she realizes that she, she's got to have to help him. How are you at her school? Fine. Violin? Rosenbaum? What's the latest on him? Should kill her. No. Just trying to play the scene with two people who are in a very different state. You know, Grace is in a very different state to the boy. 
It's also edited very much between you and Henry. Yeah. F for that very reason. This is the moment where where we realize the the tightness between the two of them and that being a monumental reason for for Grace to have to be supportive of Jonathan. Well, another fine mess I've gotten you into. Th that right there is an example of me being the kind of actor I was always told not to be. Uh, in the fir first job I ever did in the 80s, the operator said, don't, don't turn into one of the ever, one of those old actors who knows exactly where the camera is. And I realize I have, because I actually pause my line slightly, because I'm aware the camera is behind uh, Noah's head. And I wait until it emerges again before I say the next word. Well, another fine mess I've gotten you into. I'm, I'm quite in the mood here. I'm quite in the moment. The last thing you want is for someone to say afterwards, can we just go again? Because we lost half your line behind the boy's head. So you, you just don't want to lose a, a, a good take for some <laughs> stupid technical reason. <laughs> but you don't do that thing because I know, I, you know, it's, a, it's very, very visible. When actors are playing to the camera, you kind of go, ah, let me get out of here. <laughs> And I haven't, I have, you haven't done that once, even. Not remotely. Did you kill her? No. I mean, this would be a terrible conversation to have with your son, never mind having it in a prison. And Hugh plays this with such a depth and such a rawness. I thought about you, Mum. So I came back, uh, which may have been selfish again, but you see, I wanted my family back. We're never going to be a family again. Well, I, I desperately hope we will be. Come here. Come here. At this point, Henry has found the hammer. We just don't know he's found it. I mean, the whole thing of this whole series is that nothing is what it seems. At that point, Henry sort of know his dad has done it, but still love his dad. Jonathan believes that it's in inconceivable that he will go to prison. He's too great. He's, he's a, a star doctor, star healer. He's been a star all his life. Come on, Henry. <laughs> you know, there's so many things right now where you kind of go, what is the definition of truth? How do we relate to it? And that, was the, that is sort of the subtext of this whole series. I mean, it's right in front of, of Grace all the time, and she refuses to see it, as does the audience. And everybody seemed to be wanting Jonathan not to be the killer, in spite of it being blatantly clear that he was and he always was.